growth by capital investment, stimulating economic growth by investing in capital. The question we want to answer is how can a country raise its productivity so that its residents enjoy a higher standard of living? We start by making a distinction between real and nominal GDP so that we can understand what we mean by economic growth. Nominal GDP refers to the money value of output, whereas real GDP actually measures the volume of output, independent of its prices, increases in price. Are you producing a greater volume of goods and services or not? And economic growth has to do with the volume. So it is measured by the actual percentage change in real GDP. Over time, an economy will, 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 will produce higher or lower amounts of goods and services around its trend value. Output will fluctuate around the economy's normal productive capacity. What we want to figure out is how can we raise that trend line? How can we have the economy, even though its output is fluctuating, how can we have it fluctuate around a rising trend value? That's economic growth. We know that the building blocks of productivity are capital, technology, and institutions. And what we want to talk about here is what is the extent to which investing in capital can be the basis of causing the economy to grow over time. Let us do this by looking at the hypothetical case of a small farm that you have just bought. You get $100 from your auntie to invest in your farm and she sends this to you, you know, every season. And you have a small plot, plot of land. So you take your $100 and you buy some capital. Use the capital to plant out your small plot of land in sugarcane. At the end of the first season, you reap your sugarcane. At the start of the second season, you have another hundred dollars of savings, and so you buy more capital. With more capital, you're more productive, and so total output goes up from six units to eight units. Third season, you have another hundred dollars, you buy more capital. Output goes up again. Well, the first thing you will notice is that there are diminishing returns to investing in capital. If other factors are remaining the same, that is, you have the same small plot of land, you only have yourself as labor, and all you do is you keep buying tools, even though each tool helps you to produce more. The additional amount that you get by adding tools eventually is going to be less than it was before. The law of diminishing returns at some point sets in. So at this point, you know, you're producing, you know, nine units, bushels, pounds. But you have another problem. In addition to the fact that additional investments in capital are sort of running out of how much they are going to help you, there is capital depreciation. Capital depreciation is 
the reduction in the real value of a productive asset over time, usually due to wear. Equipment doesn't last forever. Capital doesn't last forever. So at some point, the first tool that you bought is going to break. It's going to wear down. And at that point, then the additional $100 you have to invest as gross investment is simply replacing the equipment that is worn out. So investing in capital gets you more, but only up to a point. And the more capital you have is the more of your savings that you have to devote to maintenance and depreciation is the more of your gross investment that ends up being spent on maintenance, depreciation, replacement, repairs. And so eventually your capital stock stops growing. It stops growing for two reasons. One, diminishing returns reduces the benefit of further investment in capital. So what's the point if it's not going to add a sufficient amount to your output? And secondly, rising depreciation absorbs all of the gross investment. You're still making gross investments, but all of it is going to replacing depreciated capital. So the amount of capital you have doesn't keep rising. You know, you can think of this as if you have a one room house and you save a certain amount of money, that amount of money might be good enough, might be enough to add a second room. But if you have a 20 room mansion, that same amount of money that you have is going to be used up entirely by repairing and replacing parts of that 20 room mansion and there's nothing left over to add on yet another room as capital grows more and more of your gross investment ends up being devoted to replacement and repairs maintenance and depreciation. So the implication of this for economic growth is the following. On the vertical axis, we are measuring the, how, how well off the country is. It's GDP per capita as it goes from being a poor country to being a rich country. And we are looking at how this is going to change over time. So with the initial stock of capital, you can produce a certain amount of output. As you keep investing in capital, output grows. But the rate at which output is growing is diminishing. It's getting smaller because of diminishing returns to capital and capital depreciation. And once you get to the point where capital stops growing, then GDP stops growing. So investing in capital does take you, does take an economy from producing less to producing more, but it doesn't allow you to keep growing indefinitely. Saving and investing can make a country wealthier, but cannot sustain indefinitely long-run economic growth.